Welcome to section 4 of viruses. This is our virus overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing cytomegalovirus, or CMV, which you can see right here. This scene will take place in the city during a futuristic time where transforming robots rule the land. You can see that we've shown the leader of the evil robots front and center. His name is Megatronics, kind of like the evil transformer robot in a popular film. In any case, the word mega sounds like cytomegalovirus, which should help you remember that this image is all about CMV. Notice that we've intentionally included a lot of blue cool colors in this image, which is to help you remember that CMV is a DNA virus. Now you can see that we've added two ladders going up to this balcony, and they're oriented parallel to one another, which is to help you remember that CMV is double-stranded. We've also shown a straight road with dashed lines in the middle, and the lines are here to help you remember that CMV is linear. Unfortunately, some of the good robots are snoozing away while Megatronics wrecks havoc on this city. The double-sided T-shaped flail is our symbol for T-cells, and the bow and arrow is our symbol for B-cells. The nuclear sign behind the robot is our symbol for mononuclear cells. Finally, the sleeping robot is a reference to the idea that the virus becomes latent. So putting all these ideas together should help you remember that CMV becomes latent in B cells, T cells, and mononuclear cells. Fortunately, another more responsible robot named Optimum Prime is awake and attempting to defend the city. You can see that this teenage kid was about to fall to his death when Optimum Prime heroically caught him and is now scraping his hand into the wall in order to slow them down before impact. Also notice that this is occurring next to a speed limit sign that says 50 miles per hour. Anyway, the lines being scraped into the building represent linear esophageal ulcers, and the 50 miles per hour sign is our symbol for a CD4 count less than 50. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that there is an increased risk of linear esophageal ulcers in HIV patients when the CD4 count is less than 50 cells per microliter. Optimum Prime is also fighting back with his high-tech laser eye weapons. These laser beams coming out of his eyes represent retinitis, and the fact that this is occurring next to the 50 mile per hour sign should help you remember that there is an increased risk of retinitis in HIV patients when the CD4 count is less than 50. This is a fundoscopy image of CMV retinitis. You can see areas of hemorrhage and white spots as well, which are sometimes referred to as cotton wool exudates. During this fierce engagement, you can see that the gutter below Optimum Prime has lit up in flames. The gutter is a symbol for the colon, and this is also occurring next to the 50 mile per hour sign. So together, these ideas should help you remember that there is an increased risk of colitis in HIV patients when the CD4 count is less than 50. Behind Optimum Prime, there is a fire hydrant that exploded as it came in contact with the fire. Now we can see water spraying all over this poor guy's head, which is our symbol for encephalitis. So there is an increased risk of encephalitis in HIV patients when the CD4 count is less than 50. Now you can see that we've added more to the scene, but let's zoom up so you can see this better. As you can see, Megatronics threw a huge axe at the ambulance, causing it to go up in flames. Fortunately, the sick person inside was brought out to the road on a stretcher, and the medic holding the transplant organs is safe as he rushes inside of the hospital. In any case, the axe resembles the lungs, and the transplant guy should make you think of transplant patients. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that CMV may cause pneumonitis in transplant patients. The guy in the stretcher is also here to reinforce the idea that many of the clinical features of CMV are manifested in immunocompromised patients, such as those with a low CD4 count or transplant patients. All right, now let's move on to discuss congenital CMV. If you look to the left of the image near the balcony, you can see that we've shown two torches. This is to help you remember that CMV is a torches infection. We've included all of the information about congenital CMV in this little balcony area. So hopefully it will be easy for you to compartmentalize this information. Now we've added more elements to the image, but it's a bit hard to see, so let's zoom up. Okay, first notice that this mom is eating a blueberry muffin. This is to help you remember that congenital CMV can cause what's known as a blueberry muffin rash. This is an image of an infant with a blueberry muffin rash. As you can see, the patient has dark lesions on the skin that resemble the blueberries in a blueberry muffin rash. These lesions occur due to extramedullary hematopoiesis in the skin. This particular image is actually of a neonate with rubella but rubella, toxoplasma, and CMV can all cause a blueberry muffin rash, so it's not very specific to CMV. We've also shown a lazy Dalmatian dog with a liver spot on it, and this is here to help you remember that congenital CMV may cause hepatosplenomegaly. Next, notice that we've shown a baby wearing some earmuffs, which is to help you remember that congenital CMV may cause deafness. The mother put these on her child because there was a pretty noisy battle going on outside, and she wanted to protect him from the loud noises. We've also shown a pet parrot that wants the milk. So it's flying at the mother and causing the milk to spill on the baby's head. The milk is a symbol for calcium or calcifications. Parrot sounds like periventricular, 
and the baby's head should make you think of the ventricles in the brain. So putting all of this together should help you remember that congenital CMV may cause periventricular calcifications. This is a CT of the brain showing periventricular calcifications. You can see the ventricles right here, and the enhancing lesions around this area right here are periventricular calcifications. The baby is also holding a penguin, which is our symbol for microcephaly, because penguins have small heads. So congenital CMV may cause microcephaly. Finally, the mother is wearing some sunglasses, and you can see the reflection of the fire from the torch. The sunglasses with fire should help you remember that congenital CMV may cause chorioretinitis. All right, if we zoom back out, you can see that we've added a broken spotlight on the rooftop. This was probably destroyed by Megatronics in his fight with Optimum Prime. In any case, the spotlight is our symbol for the monospot test. So the fact that it's broken should help you remember that the monospot test is negative in patients with CMV. This is important because patients with CMV may present similarly to a patient with an Epstein-Barr virus infection, and a monospot test can help in making an accurate diagnosis. So both groups of people may present with pharyngitis and cervical lymphadenopathy, but the monospot test will be negative in those with CMV, and it will be positive in those with EBV. We talked more about the specifics of the monospot test in the last video, so I'm not going to cover it again. All right, now notice that we've shown two halos around Optimum Prime's laser beams. These halos are here to help you remember that infected cells may show intranuclear and intracytoplasmic inclusions with a surrounding halo, which is sometimes referred to as an owl's eye. This is a biopsy of a lung from a patient with a CMV infection. You can see the characteristic owl's eye right here. Notice that there is a large intranuclear inclusion along with a surrounding white halo. All right, let's move on to discuss treatment. First, notice that we've added a fast sports car to the image. The car is blatantly ignoring the 50 mile per hour sign and racing away quickly in an attempt to escape the chaos. You can see that it's peeling out and going very fast based on the skid marks right behind the car. In any case, fast car sounds like Foscarnet, which should help you remember that CMV can be treated with Foscarnet. Now you can see that we've added a garbage can on the sidewalk nearby. The fast car better watch out for it as it speeds away or it might get in a crash. Anyway, garbage can sounds like gancyclovir, which should help you remember that this drug can also be used to treat CMV. Looks like the fast car did get in a crash after all, but it's with a violet garbage can, not the garbage can we just showed. Violet garbage can sounds like valgancyclovir, which can also be used to treat CMV. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 24-year-old female presents to her physician for results regarding a monospot test. A week ago, she developed pharyngitis and cervical lymphadenopathy, so a monospot test was performed and the results were negative. She is 19 weeks pregnant with her second child and is concerned about the implications of the test. The physician suspects that her illness was caused by a double-stranded linear DNA virus. He counsels her that the unborn child is at greatest risk for developing which of the following? A. Retinitis pigmentosa B. Patent ductus arteriosus C. Vesicular lesions on the scalp or D. Hepatosplenomegaly. Hopefully from the question stem you notice that this woman had pharyngitis and cervical lymphadenopathy along with a negative monospot test. Together, these findings should have made you think of CMV. She is also 19 weeks pregnant, so a CMV infection during pregnancy puts the unborn child at risk of developing congenital CMV. With this in mind, the only clinical feature of congenital CMV that is listed is D, hepatosplenomegaly. From the image, recall that the broken spotlight right here should help you remember that the monospot test is negative. The Dalmatian dog over here should help you remember that congenital CMV can cause hepatosplenomegaly. A is incorrect because congenital CMV can cause chorioretinitis, not retinitis pigmentosa. Retinitis pigmentosa is a degenerative disease leading to vision loss, but is not associated with CMV. So A is incorrect. B is a reference to congenital rubella, but this is a single-stranded RNA virus, not a double-stranded DNA virus. So B is incorrect. Finally, C is a reference to congenital HSV, but this would present with a painful vesicular rash on the genitals in the mother, not pharyngitis and cervical lymphadenopathy. So C is incorrect. So again, the correct answer is D, hepatosplenomegaly. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know regarding CMV.